In this chapter, we'll demonstrate the new matching features of the Curve EQ, take a look at the new Spectrum Analyzer, and touch on the improved undo history. Curve EQ is a spline EQ, meaning it shows the EQ's curve and the EQ's frequency response as smooth lines for more accurate control and analysis. Curve EQ also has the ability to copy and paste the spectrum from one audio source to another. The central control surface is the primary user interface. Double click to add control points, and you can see their associated values displayed below. Or, you can select freeform mode and draw the curve manually. You can even activate up to three curves at one time. When you do this, a white line shows you the sum or final effect of all the curves on the overall output. You can choose to show or hide the individual control points here. You can move a control point by dragging it with the left mouse button, or you can use the mouse wheel, or both mouse buttons together, to adjust the control point's bandwidth. And you double click to remove a control point. Just like other plugins in Cubase 7, Curve EQ offers an A B comparison. And any control you hover over is described in this hint window. Curve EQ offers direct access to numerous routing options. And it has its own dedicated undo redo history. Use the minimum phase option when making extreme EQ changes to smooth out the audio response. You can even export your EQ curve as a CSV file for collaboration or record keeping. One of the Curve EQ's most powerful features is its ability to match the frequency spectrum of one source to the frequency spectrum of another source. You'll need a snapshot of each spectrum in order to use matching. And just a note, set the mode editor to average for best results. And you'll need to let averaging run for several seconds until the visible spectrum becomes smooth enough to use. Then press Take. Repeat that for a second source. and then select Reference and Apply to as desired. Let's look at an example step by step. Now here's my first audio source. To apply the frequency response of this clip, I'll turn on averaging, and I'll wait for the curve to stabilize. Then select Take. Now I can start playback of my second source. And save its spectrum. Now designate the first snapshot as the reference and the second snapshot as the Apply To. After clicking Apply To, click Match Spectrums. One last note, the EQ curve present on the screen will affect the spectrum averaging process, so the EQ curve should be flat when collecting spectrum data. Spectrum matching can be very helpful in the mastering process to ensure a consistent EQ curve across all of your songs. Steinberg also upgraded the capabilities of the channel EQ. First of all, Cubase now includes a spectrum analyzer behind the EQ window. 
double click to add an EQ control point. As soon as you begin to adjust the EQ settings, you'll see a second spectrum trace appear. This shows you a before and after view of your changes. Clicking the small triangle in the corner activates the equalizer controls, and clicking it again will display those controls as knobs. To the far left is the new pre-gain section with dedicated low cut and high cut filters. If you adjust these, you can see their effect on the spectrum analyzer, but you won't see control points. You can see the knob's function written underneath it. But when you hover over the knob, this changes to a numeric value. Each EQ band has a selector in the upper right corner to change the type of EQ in use. And you can right click on any knob to show its automation data or to add it to a quick control slot. You can fine tune how the spectrum analyzer behaves in the preferences menu. You can now call up your undo redo history in its own window and move back and forth to a specific point. You now have the option to undo and redo visibility changes. Now let's move on to the next chapter and take a look at loudness.